The next keynote speaker that we have, a person of immense and vast experience, he spent over 25 years in the Tata Administrative Services, inclu including being their executive director. In his previous roles, he was also the chairman of the Boston Con Consulting Group in India, a thought leader and a writer of multiple books on transformational change and leadership. Uh, some of the books that he has written, Discordant Democrats, Five Steps to Consensus, Remaking India, One Country, Our Desti One Destiny. Currently a member of the Planning Commission in the Government of India since July 2009. It's our honor and pleasure to invite Mr. Arun Myra to give us his thoughts. Thank you, sir, for coming here. We welcome you. Well, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to uh, uh, share some thoughts with you, the Project Management Institute, uh, which I've learned to admire, having got to know it uh, not too long ago. I, maybe, I don't know, it's my ignorance. And Dr. Ramchandran, thank you very much for introducing us together. And since then, I must say, it's turned out to be a pretty, uh, I was wondering what the right word is, a, a relationship which is almost like a marriage. But maybe I think we're still uh, dating very well and going very well together. So thank you very much for uh, inviting me here. So who's the we? And I'll explain that uh, as, as we go on our side. But I want to um, um, share an image with you, and this an image is of a place not too far away from here, um, at uh, on the old, or the, or the um, Delhi Mumbai, sorry, the Gurgaon uh, Delhi Road, not the highway, the other road, and at this junction, which is not too far from here, um, as you enter Gurgaon from Delhi, there's a lovely sight in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, at this place, the big road from Delhi comes in, and it's broken on both sides. It's a wide road, and it's been stripped on both sides completely for um, several hundred, a couple of hundred or 400 kilometer, uh, meters on both sides. And you can't move, because why would someone repairing a road strip everything on the road <laughs> for a long stretch on all sides. So the cars are bumping around and there's dust all over. And just above that, just a few meters above, is running the metro. And you can see this thing gliding smoothly over. So here we are in this country, India, where we have things like what you see at the bottom on the road. And that's not an unusual sight, where things are completely seem to be out of control. Uh, last week, the Times of India, second page, was many stories on that road stretch. And the people complaining about, you know, can't we organize to get things done properly? And a government officer of the largest uh, corporation that is responsible for uh, the urban development here in, uh, in uh, Gurgaon admitted that uh, we didn't plan properly. He said there are many agencies involved, of course, and you know we didn't coordinate with each other. So the citizens are suffering the mess. And just above, as I said, is this Delhi Metro. And all of us in India are so proud of what we can do, just above. We want more of what's above, and we want much less of what is, is below. We as a country are at a moment uh, of national doubt. We had believed. Uh, very clearly, till a few years ago, that we were on a takeoff. And it seems that we have uh, hit some roadblocks uh, in the last uh, uh, two or three years, and there is this sense of like being on that road, confusion, muddling along, and wondering, um, as a contrast, as we compare ourselves with China, which seems to be running like the metro above, and we say, well, we are the two powers in Asia, two billion plus countries. Why could we not be like China? And why do we have to be like what's happening uh, below? And it's not for want of intelligent people, and people say uh, that uh, from abroad, when, uh, or abroad that 
I mean, an Indian is as smart as a Chinese, and quite often they say that maybe you're even smarter as individuals. But why is it that collectively, here in India particularly, you can't do things the way the Chinese collectively are able to do, I have been demonstrating all this time. As we were shaping the 12th five-year plan, which we finished um, um, a few months ago, and I must say, we didn't finish the plan on time. <laughs> and Dr. Ramchandran would say, well, you can make the planning of the plan a project itself, right? And you can set tasks and have a per chart and, and manage it. And I'm, I'm afraid we overshot it by quite a bit. But as we were making it early on, we were asking uh, uh, the citizens of the country about what their inputs were towards the future of India and their, their thoughts about what we would have to do to get there. And very loudly, we heard from many, many uh, different stakeholders, businesses generally, yes, but even the, the civil society stakeholders saying, look, don't make another plan, just get things done. And someone put it very colorfully, saying that uh, in India, please, we don't want any more foundation stones, just have finishing stones. <laughs> So I want to turn to another country which after the Second World War was feeling a, a lack of confidence in itself and a sort of loss of national pride, which was Japan. And what happened to Japan in the 70s, from late 60s to 70s, is a story worth recalling. That by the end of the 70s into the early 80s, Japan became the hallmark of things happening on time, which was not so even 20 years before in Japan, a country where nothing went wrong, it seems, the quality of everything, whether it was electronic goods or cars or their trains, was just the world's best. What happened in Japan during that time for a country to transform the way it did things in many sectors from muddling along, it would seem, towards always getting it right? And yes, the total quality movement is the explanation mostly for what changed Japan. And the total quality movement is people everywhere, in every industry, in many offices, in the public services like trains, learning to do things in a different way, in a better way, uh, and getting them, getting them done. So I want to come back to the metro here and say, well, uh, Mr. Sridharan is someone that we all respect so much now that in spite of the general muddle around, the Delhi Metro could be what it is. Last year, at an awards uh, function in uh, Delhi, one of the largest halls that we have in Delhi, several hundred people, and there were several awards being given to persons who had contributed the most to uh, social work in the country, the business that had grown the most in the country, and so on. And there were eight or nine awards, and one of them was given to Mr. Sridharan. And it was so nice to see that when he went up for his award, people got up and stood up and clapped, which was not so for any of the others. And so uh, I was announcing his award. We were each given a person who we would introduce and announce their awards and then shake the person's hand afterwards, uh, I've been in afterwards. And I was, of course, so proud that I was being asked to give Mr. Sridharan the award. And so he was so, as you know him, so humble and so embarrassed by all of this that he was standing what to do. So I said spontaneously, I said, Mr. Sridharan, you have taught us that we can do it too. And you have told us that we must have pride in ourselves that we can do it too. That's why we are all standing here and clapping uh, for you. And Sridharan, when he spoke, he was asked to say a few words, said, you know, it's not about the leader. It's not about me. It's about the methods we used, just that much. And what more do you want to have as a lesson? So we come to back again to this junction here, and as the Huda person said, Huda, that look, we didn't plan, we didn't coordinate, there are many agencies, and it's very difficult to coordinate, and it seems to be very difficult to plan under such circumstances, but there we have the thing above, which seems to get done in the same country in 
much the same environment. So we realized that to make results happen, as I said in the 12th plan, we realized that it's not so much about the plan, actually, it was about learning how to get things done. And as a country, having a plan to learn how to get things done. And so we created a, an idea, which is called the India Backbone Implementation Network, and I believe it's been mentioned earlier uh, today. And I thought I'd like to say a few words about the India Backbone Implementation Network. The India Backbone Implementation Network, in the concept of how it can infect uh, the whole country with uh, uh, a new way of people doing things wherever they are in their organization, is conceived like the total quality movement. Like there was no boss of TQM introducing it everywhere, no budget for TQM in the country. It was not done by a central ministry. It was just many people, the Japan Union of Scientists and Engineers, the Toyota Motor Company, many other uh, companies, all infecting each other, learning from each other. It was a network of activities, uh, a learning system that changed what Japan did, or rather how Japan did things. So we modeled it like that. We said, we've got to start injecting into this system new thoughts, new ideas, which will infect other persons, because we're looking as a country for better ways to get things done. We are at that moment now. See, we know that's what we have to learn. Please, someone, show me how, and we'll get it done. So in that regard, uh, we said, well, let's find people who can show others how to get things done, and they buy their track record, and they have tools to teach others, like in the Total Quality Movement. We've been inviting partners, and one of the first of our partners was PMI. And isn't it so appropriate? If it is about... <laughs> if it is about... If it is about providing people the tools and the means by which they can get done in their companies, in their projects, what they really aspire to get done, but haven't learned how to get done, PMI has got the answers. Not completely, yes? Because as we looked at what is holding up things getting done in the country, um, it is project management, of course, converting what would otherwise be confusion into coordinated action, which is what project management would be. But even preceding that, there are many situations where people have, let me say, almost ideological differences with each other. There's contention amongst many, many agencies. And in some cases, there's no ideological difference, like in departments of government or ministries of government, yet they are in contention with each other and not sufficient collaboration. So we needed ways, we need ways to convert contentions into collaboration and ways to convert confusion into coordination. So at the confusion to coordination end, PMI is probably one of the best in the world, um, and there it is. And there are others also. But on the other end, people who say, well, if you people don't even want to sit down and talk to each other, well, we have a way to sort of induce you uh, to do it. And there are skills and tools and people who do that and have done that pretty well, too. So we have a, a, a mix of capabilities that we are putting together as uh, the uh, sources of help that people could take, depending on which, if I would describe it as a funnel, which part of the funnel they seem to be stuck in. At the front end of the funnel, on this side, the input end, there could be situations where people have got differences with each other going back to generations. It's like a hate uh, to the other. And yet we are part of the same country and got to learn to at least listen and start talking to each other, creating a project that we will do together. Right? And then as you go more and more towards delivering, it's more and more towards project management and execution at that, at that end. So I am very pleased that uh, uh, I have been asked to uh, share these thoughts with you um, because it's all about you and what you're aiming to do. We are very happy, uh, the, the Planning Commission, to say that uh, we had a role in creating uh, this idea, this network, and that's rolling out. And I want to say a little bit about how Ibn has been constructed. 
India Backbone Implementation Network, but we're pronouncing it Ibn, because Ib, Ib in uh, Hindi dialects uh, in Uttar Pradesh is, means now, Abhi, Ibi. Hmm? And in is, well, let's get in and do it together. Or in is also India. Well, let's, it's all about India together, right? <laughs> we have uh, no full-time organization. It sounds like a project management institute. In fact, we have, you at least have some. We have none. <laughs> it's purely <laughs> voluntary uh, collaboration, but with that passion, which just says you got 110% of me, not even a part of me. And so we have got young and old people who are the node, if I can say. It's a network, like I said, and we see many nodes arising and some already started to form. And these nodes connect and then smaller nodes arise and soon you see it's like a, a firmament of things which light up the whole sky and then yes, you can say there's at the moment sense of bloom in the country, but we can create this nice, bright, starry firmament, this network of people who are all holding hands with each other, supporting each other. They don't have any boss over them, but as a network, we would get things done. People have asked me, uh, I was in Calcutta uh, yesterday and talking about uh, you know, making change happen, industrial policy and urban development and in uh, uh, West Bengal, the government people there, it's a public meeting again. And there too, questions were being asked to me, but Mr. Myra, there's no point talking about all these budgets and plans. Of it. So I mentioned Ibn again to them, and there was much excitement and saying, well, that's a great idea. How can I join? How can I cooperate? How can I help? And this, I said, I don't know how to say it in a minute. We've got a website somewhere. <laughs> Do you remember the, uh, the name of your website, I said no. So I promptly, today before coming here, said I must get the name of this website. And it's such a simple one. It's called ibnmovement.in. It's a movement. So it's ibnmovement.in. So I would request you to look at it and you'll find there the names of our members, including uh, PMI. You'll find their case studies, the few already, of work that have been done by our members which illustrate what we are saying about converting contention to collaboration and confusion to coordination and thereby converting our intentions into implementation and, and results. We, within the four months that we launched this, uh, which was in April, have already got so many large projects of different types going with, as I said, the appropriate facilitators and tools, supporting them. And I do expect that you'll see more of these cases and proving to ourselves that in India, we can get it done better than perhaps anybody in the world. So that's the ambition. <laughs> and I thank you very much. Thank you. Sir, if I can just request you to please uh, stay on for a moment. Uh, the countdown timer says two minutes, 40 seconds, and something to go, and he's very proud, and I have to point out that he's one of the few speakers who finished on time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to now invite uh, uh, Srinivas uh, Koparapu, the cha chapter president of the Pearl City chapter Hyderabad, to please present this memento to sir as an appreciation from our side. So some of the things that you said, uh, I'm sure we will follow, and I'm sure all of us will be logging into ibnmovement.in as soon as we get a chance today. Uh, 